Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to go over the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season and review everything that happened this year that was of importance. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the hurricane season as a whole, and this is a typical chart of what the hurricane season will bring us during the typical year peak normally in the middle of September and the, the pink box that you see here is where 97% of our tropical activity occurs throughout any given year. Pink arrow is pointing to outside of the box which means we are done officially with the hurricane season which is from June 1st to November 30th today being December 5th. You can see that we are uh, out of what would be hurricane season now officially but as you can see based on this chart we could still see some potential activity especially with la nina still lingering around potentially kicking in as we get into the winter months uh, but right now we're not expecting anything to develop so what happened during this past hurricane season well let's go back to when i made my forecast prediction back on May 30th, one of the first videos that I made for this coming season, and we were predicting 25 named storms uh, because of the very warm Atlantic and the La Nina conditions expected to persist in the peak of the hurricane season. We expected 11 of those to become hurricanes and five of those to become major hurricanes. Lo and behold, we got two out of three of those right. 2024, we had 20, 18 named storms altogether, which is above average of the normal 14.4. We had 11 named hurricanes, and five of those became major hurricanes. So we got, like I said, two out of three of those categories correct, which is pretty good, I think. And the only thing that kept our number of named storms coming uh, untrue is because of that very quiet period after the very very beginning of the season when we were very active with storms like Barrel and we didn't get active again until the uh, middle end of September into October where we saw Helene and Milton and everything else come to life. So here we are you can see this is where we were when we were making our forecast predictions back on May 30th we were just starting to see El Nino disappear and neutral Enzo come into play with the hints of La Nina. We saw the very warm Atlantic. And then by the time we get to today, we see that La Nina still hasn't kicked in, but it's much cooler out there now. But look, we still have those above average sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic. And in speaking of where the Nino 3.4 index is right now, it's currently at a negative 0 0.92 degrees Celsius against the long-term average. Um, and I'm expecting the National Hurricane Center, I mean NOAA, to uh, actually say that we're going to be entering uh, La Nina probably sometime this month because we're, we've are we been south of the negative 0 0.5 degrees Celsius for more than three months now. And that's usually, it's three months on average for them to say, all right, Let's, uh, it's officially La Nina. So expecting that to occur sometime this month. In terms of the named hurricanes that we had, we started off towards the latter half of June with Alberto. And of course we had Beryl, which was the earliest category five storm ever. And then we had Chris, and then we had a very boring, uh, and people would say, thank God, in July, where we had no name storms. August, we had Debbie and Ernesto, nothing crazy. And then it wasn't until the middle of September where things finally started kicking off. And we had Francine, Gordon, Helene, which was devastating. We'll go over that. Isaac, Joyce, Kirk, Leslie, getting into the beginning of October, where this is where normally peak hurricane season would be September. You can see everything was shifted this season to October. So, and then we had Milton, which was a beast, uh, rapidly intensifying really fast in the southern Gulf of Mexico before 
moving northeast towards the Tampa uh, Bay region of Florida, expanding and weakening to a Category 5 for bringing a ton of uh, life-threatening storm surge to the west coast of Florida. And then all those tornadoes in southern Florida uh, uh, and then around the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach area, which was just insane. I mean, EF3 uh, tornadoes, outbreaks like you would normally see in Tornado Alley. Uh, it's unreal what this hurricane season brought you. And then after that, we had Nadine, Oscar, Patty, uh, Raphael, and Sarah to end the season as of right now, in the middle of uh, November. And then in terms of ace, it wasn't the most ace we've seen ever, but we had our peaks and valleys, but we, as you can see, we had a above average season for in terms of ace, the accumulated cyclone energy during that low period, the, uh, during the big, the months of August and in September, you can see how we dipped below average for, briefly before spiking up during our second peak of hurricane season. And in terms of the ace points, the majority of them came from our major hurricanes. So Beryl in the beginning of the season, Ernesto gave us a few uh, ace points, and then it really didn't kick in again until we had Kirk, which was long-lasting, Leslie, Milton, obviously, and then... Uh, Raphael uh, lasted a, quite a long time, even though it wasn't that strong uh, towards the end of the season. So in terms of the actual ice energy, you can see those peaks and valleys where typically the black line shows us where we would peak in the middle of September, around September 10th. And we had three big peaks, well, actually two big peaks and then two little peaks. The beginning of the season with Beryl, the peak of the hurricane season when we had Helene and, and Milton and all of our devastating storms in October and late September. And then, of course, a couple of uh, smaller peaks in August and uh, in November. Uh, so that's where we were. And we're still trying to figure out what caused that big valley in the middle of the hur hurricane season from July all the way to uh, the middle of September, when we would normally see a ramp up of activity. Some are saying it was uh, the storms coming off the coast of Africa were of a higher latitude, so they were more in dry air. Uh, we had some instability, the Saharan air layer. All those are key factors, and they're still trying to figure out the exact cause, and we'll make a video about that later this year or early next year in 2025 if they come out with an, an actual reason or we can make a video of what we think happened. And then we had all of the uh, named storms in themselves, 18 named storms. As you can see, here's the tracks preliminary of where they were. A ton of landfalls from these systems throughout the Caribbean and the Gulf Coast. Five of them along the Gulf Coast in the United States themselves. With the notable ones uh, being obviously Barrow uh, in the uh, towards the end of June, it formed out way out in the Atlantic and then eventually worked its way in uh, the month of July towards Texas and made landfall in Texas and brought some devastating uh, rainfall amounts as a uh, major hurricane making landfall. And then after that, we pretty much had a lull period where we didn't have anything going on f until August. And then it wasn't until September that we had our most destructive hurricane of the season, which was Helene. And you can see this was making landfall uh, towards the end of September in the Big Bend region. And then it eventually moved its way up towards Appalachia in the uh, United States, North Carolina bringing devastating uh, rainfall totals to the region, wiping out the uh, Appalachian Mountain regions like near Asheville, North Carolina. I mean, to this day, they still don't have some of the interstates uh, open because they've been washed out by, by the rivers in those valleys. And it's going to take months to years for those to, places to recover, just like uh, New Orleans from... 
uh, Katrina, and we had Harvey hit the Houston area uh, with all its flooding. So it's going to be a ton of time and money to re repair those regions. And then, of course, we had Milton, which brought all those uh, tornadoes, like I said, made landfall, luckily, I mean, for at least Tampa, just to the south of it. So it didn't bring the devastating uh, storm surge right into the Tampa Bay region. But at places south of there, obviously, uh, did not escape that fury of Milton, even though it wasn't a Category 5 storm anymore when it made landfall in Florida, like it was back just north of the Yucatan Peninsula, rapidly intensifying uh, to Category 5 from a tropical storm in 24 hours. Insane. And then with the all those rain bands coming into the South Florida, bringing those EF3 and EF2 uh, tornadoes to the region, it's we had a very costly hurricane season. It's, and in terms of what the hurricane hunters did, they had a lot of flying to do uh, with the 11 hurricanes, five of those major hurricanes. Pacific Ocean also had uh, some storms that they had to investigate. And because of all the devastation that caused uh, from all these named storms making landfall, not only in the United States, but in the Caribbean, it's the second costless hurricane season uh, to date with $191 billion in damages and still counting because they're still trying to recover, like in North Carolina, from uh, Haleem. So what can we expect going forward? Well, this is the Atlantic Hurricane uh, Basin as we speak. As you can see, not expecting anything to develop. It's dominated by those extratropical systems, which are temperature-driven, not uh, tropical-driven in these, this time of year. Uh, so we have some snowstorms uh, occurring, up, uh, now better clipper moving up in the northeast of the United States right now. A couple of other storms heading towards Africa and Europe. And sometimes we, uh, at those fronts, when they are moving across the Atlantic, can pinch off and develop a low pressure system. So if there's any development uh, in the months uh, between now and the hurricane season, typically would be subtropical in nature. But right now, we're not ex we don't see anything forming in the vicinity. Nothing in the se next seven days, according to the National Hurricane Center. But I'm not ruling it out. As you saw the graph at the beginning of this video, there's still that 3% chance of seeing something form off-season. December is one of those months where it can occur. Uh, we have a very warm temperatures in the Atlantic still. Gulf of Mexico is still very warm. The Caribbean, uh, we're running well above average, even in the off-season. Typically, anywhere in those yellows and reds would support tropical development still if the uh, conditions were favorable in the atmosphere. Those green regions where we see 22, 23, 26 degrees Celsius, uh, that would support potentially subtropical development if the uh, cold enough air aloft uh, to support thunderstorms versus the relatively warm oceans. But right now, we have a ton of dry air in the Atlantic, so conditions are not favorable. We have a ton of wind shear, so we're not expecting anything to develop right now. But if we were to put the GFS model into motion, you can see that after a week's time frame, some of those uh, nor'easter like storms, extra tropical storms, do pinch off and develop a low pressure system that would be broad in nature, but potentially could be subtropical if it uh, was to find the right balance of uh, cold air aloft, light wind shear, potentially could see something develop. So we'll keep an eye on the Atlantic, but right now we're not expecting anything to develop. But as you can see, middle December, maybe around the 15th, 16th, something could spark up. But right now, nothing of immediate concern. Going forward, we're going to be making videos uh, with our predictions for next season. Uh, so we're you're to see this La Nina be talked about potentially uh, once it does get triggered. Like I said, we're at negative 0.9 degrees Celsius right now, negative 0.5 for three months 
straight. It's typically La Nina, uh, but Noah hasn't declared it yet, but I'm expecting them to do some time this month or in January. And then the Enzo forecast, as you can see, for next season, next hurricane season, July, August, September, where that black arrow is located, uh, looks like right now we're going to be neutral Enzo, kind of how we were this year. Uh, not expecting El Nino or La Nina, but neutral Enzo conditions. And if we continue to maintain that warm uh, Atlantic, you're going to see another above average season. Maybe not hyperactive, but at least above average. And this climate forecast system, CFC, that's also showing one of those models to be neutral Enzo as well. So we'll keep an eye on everything and you'll see me. Uh, sporadically throughout the winter with videos updating you on our forecast and if anything was to be developing subtropical uh, as well. As a reminder, we have stupid things available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.